This is Ryan Abraham, Shotgun Spratling, uscfootball.com. Instant analysis from USC Spring Practice number eight, officially more than halfway through. We got Shotgun here from the East Coast. Check it out, practice for the first time in spring. You were out there taking some photos. Check out uscfootball.com. He'll have his photos and stuff up there. Uh, just looking at some of the new players you get to see in person for the first time, or maybe see the old players uh, that you saw that maybe their bodies changed a little bit. Any kind of differences you saw from the last time you saw these guys? I mean, I feel like this is going to be very similar to, to the observations from the first day, but Romello Height is a big dude, <laughs> and he moves really well. Watching him in drills and stuff, we did get to see Corey Foreman back out there, and he makes Corey Foreman look a little bit small yeah. uh, just from the body types. They're similar body types, but Romello Height is a little bit bigger, so I thought you know that guy definitely stands out when you see him. Yeah. Um, some of the defense alignment, I watched those drills pretty close. Uh, just seeing the way they move. Some of the new guys, Earl Barquette, moves really well. Brandon Peely, I thought, was moving really well. He said he still wants to slim down some weight, but just the way he was moving after that Achilles injury, that's an injury you don't know how guys are going to come back and the explosiveness, but he looked like he was moving really well. So that, that one definitely stood out to me. Pay more attention to the defense than the offense. Uh, but, you know, Caleb Williams looks like a dude, and he's always having fun out there. So it was good to get to see him uh, up close and personal and see uh, the vibe around him. You know, he, he just it comes with an aura around yes. him. Um, and that's just because he's always having fun. You know, he's got a smile, a big smile on his face as he goes about everything and seems to be enjoying himself. And everyone else seems to be doing that as well. Yeah, so it's a defensive day. Today's Thursday. We got to talk to the offensive players on Tuesday. Uh, but normally we talk to Lincoln Riley on Tuesday. He was available today for whatever reason, so we got to talk to him. And, you know, there was a scrimmage on Tuesday. I asked him, you know, straight up about that one. And, you know, I tried to talk to a lot of the coaches about the scrimmage. Everyone seemed like they accomplished what they wanted to do. There was live tackling for the first time. He reiterated that for the offensive line and defensive line, it's not, you know, they're usually live all the time anyway because you're going against it. So that's what we kind of heard from offensive players there. But overall, it seemed like it was a positive scrimmage. I asked Brian Odom about it. He's like, I don't even I'm thinking about today. I don't even remember what happened on Tuesday, but any thoughts, that you, anything you heard about the scrimmage from Tuesday? You know, it was pretty much, they didn't put much stock in it. It didn't seem like, you know, it was like, okay, this is a data point and we're going to go with it, but it's not something that they were really looking at. Like we got to take away from, from this scrimmage and it's going to change the way we're going to go about the rest of spring or anything. It's just like, Hey, we did some scrimmage periods. We got some stuff out of it. We're moved on to the next day. That's yeah. what it kind of seemed like. It didn't seem like it, they made a huge deal out of it. Whereas in the past, a lot of times the scrimmages were on Saturday. So it was kind of like the culmination of the week you yeah. know it's a big thing we want to make a big deal about it and you know really try to emphasize what we can get out of those scrimmages this it seemed like they didn't even do it on a saturday they did it on a tuesday and not even that it was a scrimmage day it was like we had some scrimmage periods during yeah. it so uh, i think just the way they talked about it and the way they went about it it sounds like is a little bit different from the previous regime yeah we got to also talk with alex grinch the defensive coordinator uh for usc I'm uh, just kind of giving some overall assessment of, of where things are going. He talked about, we're going to get to Damani Jackson a little bit, who returned to practice. We're going to get about, you know, Rajon Davis, who got gold plated today. We'll talk about that in a second. But anything that stood out from what Alex Grinch was, was saying today? I mean, it goes back to Rajon Davis. And you want to hold that a little bit, but no, every, everyone talking effusive about the steps Rajon Davis is taking and that he is coming on. Uh, I think Lincoln Riley said that as well, is that, hey, he, you know, he, Started a little slow, but he's really come on the last couple of practices. So that stood out to, to, to Grinch and to Riley. And I think that's a positive for USC because that's a guy a lot of people have been asking about. Where's Rajon Davis? Where is he on the depth chart? Why are we not hearing more about him? Well, he had to make it, make his, uh, make his move himself, and it sounds like he's done that the last couple of practices. Everyone seemed very effusive in praise of praise of what he's done recently. Yeah, and like I said, he was gold plated, so he got the little logo on the side of his helmet. It's a t shirt. Uh, I think you spotted uh, Brendan Rice mm -hmm. also got that. So uh, the transfer wide receiver from Colorado. So we're sort of slowly finding out who's getting this gold plated stuff. But going back to Davis, it's funny because he is a fan favorite. Maybe that's why. A lot of the media were asking about it because a lot of the fans ask us, like, what's mm -hmm. going on with him? But, you know, Brian Odom talked about him. Uh, that's just, you know, Lincoln Riley talked about him. Alex Grinch talked about him. If he's someone that can contribute, like, right now or, you know, in this season, I think that's going to go a long way for this linebacker group that just didn't perform all that well last year. Yeah, and, and uh, Brian Odom said that – I think it was Brian Odom. One of the, one of the coaches yeah. said that Shane Lee and Raylan Goforth have been the most consistent – but that, that uh, Rajon is really coming on, and I think that's a great sign. Uh, you know, Shane Lee is a guy that you want to be that leader. I talked to him for a good, good amount of time uh, today. He talked about Rajon. He said and it was the same comment, the same word came up every person that talked about Rajon Davis, effort. Yeah. 
And I think that's a great sign. You know, he's still got to clean up some stuff. And uh, I think it was Alex Grinch or, or Brian Odom said previously he needed to mature a little bit and said that he's making, taking those strides right now, which I think is a positive sign that he realizes what he's got to do. And even Ray Jean talked about that with Shane Lee. He said the first time when he came into the weight room and saw Shane Lee putting on five plates to do squats, he said, all right, I got to step my game up. Maybe I'm going to do four plays a day, but I got to I got to start doing more. And he's looking at him as a guy who's played at Alabama, had really a lot of success as a freshman. Okay, I see what this guy's doing, the work he's putting in. And talked a little bit with Brian Odom, and he, he said that, you know, uh, Shane Lee's a guy that you got to tell – You've done enough today. Yeah. You've done enough in the in the weight room. You've done enough in the film room. Go home and, and get some rest. You need to make sure your body's healing up too uh, with some rest. But I thought that was very interesting because I asked him, you know, what do they need from um, what do they need from Shane Lee as a leader? Because you have some of those younger guys like Rajon Davis on the roster, and even even guys that are older like Raylan Goforth, but I think can still look and g- gain a lot of insight from Shane Lee. Um, so what do they need from him? And he said, just be himself. Yeah. Because what he's doing is enough to be a leader. The fact that they have to tell him to leave and you know go home and stuff, I, I think that was really interesting. And Shane Lee, I talked about some what he tries to do, and he said the same thing. I just got to be myself. Um, you know, he, he's not necessarily the most vocal guy, no. but he's just got to go about it and, and you know just attack the day every day and be passionate. And that's what he is. Yeah, that was a funny line from Odom. He's like, "Just go home. Like you're just gonna go home right now." It's like the end of Ferris Bueller. Like, just go home. You've you're watching a film. This, this is over. Uh, Dewani Jackson was a name that came up a lot. Speaking of. Former modern day stands out. Uh, only two incoming freshmen uh, right now taking part in spring football. And CJ Williams has been out there, the wide receiver, but this is the first time we got to see, well, we didn't see much, but Damani Jackson practice out there. Uh, Dante Williams, I talked to him about it. He's like, yeah, man, he's like a 10 2 guy. Uh, you know, just he has a 40 inch vertical. He could do all these things. Um, just, uh, I think there's a lot of optimism. And there's, you know, the whole secondary is gone basically from last year, mm-hmm. all the starters. So someone like Damani Jackson can come in. If you have a five-star, you can showcase in some way. It'll be a positive thing for this team. Uh, But there was a lot of positivity talking about him just kind of coming back. I mean, the fact that he's back because he missed pretty much his entire senior season um, was not, from what we were told, it was not a tear, but it was a severe injury to his knee enough that it kept him out for the entire season. And we didn't know how long it would take before. They said he would work him back a little by little in spring and not try to rush him or anything. But the fact that he's back and able to do some of those drills that we saw early, I think is a, is a positive sign. It's great to see him back out there. We also saw Joshua Jackson Jr. back out there as well. So two cornerbacks that they got back today, uh, just adding some more depth. And that's another guy that – Maybe he can get in the mix. And that's what you're kind of waiting to see is who's going to jump in that mix. Yeah. Uh, Latrell McCutcheon talked a little bit, and he said, you know, he's been playing some safety. He said he's played all basically every uh, secondary position um, so far in the spring. So they're moving him all over the place. And I think part of that is because they're a little bit down on the numbers without the two Jacksons out there. So now getting those back, that adds to it. And you can do a little bit more as far as different drills and whatnot uh, and just be able to go against each other each day. So seeing Damani back out there is a positive sign just because, you know, you want to see what the freshman can do and then see where he has to gain uh, you know spots and where he has to gain reps and where he needs to gain stuff to, to become a player that can contribute so getting that baseline now I think is a really good sign yeah the fact that McCutcheon is playing everywhere uh, Alex Grinch talked about cross training these guys you know training the different positions he just wants the five best defensive backs out there he thought the safeties you could interchange easier but he just whoever the five are, it doesn't matter. So it doesn't seem like it's corner, nickel, whatever. Like if you're one of the five best, if it's all safeties, they're just gonna put all safeties out there. And I just assume that Max Williams will be one of those five. Yeah. I don't know where he's gonna play, but that guy's <laughs> gonna be on the field. He's a playmaker. Yeah. Um, and great to see him back. My first time seeing him back after the knee injury, a second knee injury. So uh, I was happy to see him out there moving around, moving really well. Same thing, like I said with Peely, just seeing those guys that come back from injuries. And Damani Jackson, you want to see how are they moving. Does it look the same? Does it look like a little tentative? Is there a lack of explosion? What is it? And, you know, the guys that I saw that I noticed and, and you know, took notes on that had, were coming back from injuries, everyone looked like they were either back to their old self or even better. Yeah. Speaking of Peely, we'll kind of end on that with the defensive line. So uh, I think at the very end, Lincoln Riley was asked about the front seven of the defense and, you know, had some good things to say about the linebacker, but he thought there was a lot of depth at the defensive line. Mentioned, I think, all the transfers by name, but he also mentioned – Brandon Peely, you know, him to be able to be back there. Uh, you got to talk to him. What, what was uh, Peely have to say? I mean, just talking about coming back from the injury, he said he cried when he realized that, you know, his season was going to be over last year, especially, you know, some of the guys that, you know, he was a senior last year, some of the guys that he came in with are going to be gone, that type of thing. But he said he, he slowly realized as the season progressed probably too, but blessing the skies that, yeah. you know, maybe his last year wasn't that year 
uh, you know, not four and not eight. Not four and eight, yeah. So <laughs> he's going to get an opportunity to, to play in this new system. And, he's, you know, he's a bigger guy, a bigger defense tackle, but he thinks he plays really well in the system. You know, the fact that they want to get upfield quickly, they want to attack. He said that's the way he played in high school, and he feels like that's going to fit him even better. And even though he's a big dude, we know how athletic he is and how quick he is on his feet. So as we see him walking by out here, but, wow. uh, you know, he's a guy that I think can fit really well into this defense. Now, he's still he said he wants to slim down. He still wants to lose another 10, 15 pounds. But watching him on the bag drills and stuff like that, I was I was curious. It's like, okay, with an Achilles injury, that can be one where you lose a step of explosion. And that's what the doctors told him, he said. He said, they told me that, I, that I'm not going to be as explosive as. And he said, I don't believe that. He said, I feel just as uh, – he feels, I feel as good as I was. He said he did so many um, – I think it was uh, you know squat lifts uh, on the on the bench, you know just the, the calf raises and stuff, just because those are the exercises he could do as he's building up that leg, and he feels really healthy, he feels really strong, and he was moving really well on the drills that I watched. So I think that's a positive sign because a guy with experience, it's obviously it's a new system, everybody's coming to the new system, but I think he fits really well, even though he's he's that big body and he can take up space if you need him to, but he can attack and be that type of player. You know, he doesn't have to be 265 pounds, Hercules yeah. Matafa. Yeah. He can be 315 pounds, Brandon Peely, and still make a similar impact in my mind because of the way he is uh, athletic enough to be able to attack those gaps. We covered a lot of stuff, but there's always some nuggets hanging around <laughs> in your brain up there. Any final thoughts about the first spring practice you got to see? I mean, it's just good to, good to be back out here. I thought it was interesting. It's 90 to 95 degrees yeah. out here, and a lot of people were complaining. Benny Wiley was not having any of that, the strength coach. He said, that's an excuse. We're not going to use that at all. But a lot of people in the media and stuff were complaining, and I felt like, oh, this feels so good because it's been 50 degrees colder <laughs> where I've been the last couple of weeks. So uh, I thought it was great out there, and you know, I think the players embraced it. I think they were, were going to try to go a little bit lighter, but you know, they, they called us out there early, and then they still ended up going the, the entire time. So yeah. um, it seemed like they might have want to, hey, let's pull back a little bit, but they didn't. Yeah. You know, that, that seemed like it might be a case, but that tells you what this group is. And I think this references back to Lincoln Riley's comment on Saturday where he said, you know, I start to leave the field and I don't want to. And he said, I don't feel like I'm the only one. I'm just so excited because, you know, of the way we're playing, the energy we have. And you, you can feel that energy today. Just the guys when they're coming off the field and, and, you know, chatting with some of the guys as they were walking out and just saying hello to some of the guys I hadn't seen in a while. Uh, I think the energy is definitely there. You can definitely tell it's a different vibe than it has been in the past. All right. Well, that's going to wrap things up here. Uh, we're in Heritage Hall, USC spring football practice. Number eight for Shotgun Spraddling, I am Ryan Abraham. Thanks for watching Instant Analysis. Make sure you check out uscfootball.com for more.